I expect that most of you who are watching this program will already have been in Lust Church. But if that's the case, this will be a little bit of nostalgia for you. For those of you who haven't been in Lust Church, let me just tell you a little bit about it. Although there's been a church here since the year 510, yes, that's right, in four years' time, we're going to celebrate 1,500 years of continual Christian presence here. This particular building has only been here since 1875. It's not that there was anything wrong with the building before. It's just that in December 1873, the Laird went out from here to the island in Schlonig, just opposite, in order to kill deer to bring home as venison for Christmas lunch. On the way back, his boat overturned, and he and several of his men drowned. His son decided that the best thing that he could do to make a lasting memorial to his father was to dismantle the church and to rebuild it as a memorial to his dad. The instructions that he gave to his workers were that when folk came into the church, their eyes should be drawn towards the roof and they should be reminded of an upturned boat. And so we've been gifted this very, very beautiful Scottish traditional hammer beam roof. All of the beams are made of Scottish oak coming from five miles or less from the church. And all of the wood in between the beams is Scottish pine. It's a lovely, lovely building. But inside it, there are lots of things that are very, very much older. I'm leaning against one of them. This is an effigy of St. Kessig. But it's obviously not an effigy of St. Kessig dressed in the clothes that he would have worn in the year 510. No, this is very, very much more recent. Let me tell you about it. In the year 1314, the Scots had their great victory against the English at the Battle of Bannockburn. On that particular occasion, they were led by King Robert the Bruce. King Robert the Bruce knew Luss. He knew Luss for one thing because he had a hunting lodge about five miles south of here. He knew it for another because he came here to go across to that same island, to Inch Lonig, to get the wood for his arrows, for his bowmen. And because he knew Luss and the story of St. Kessig, on the morning of the Battle of Bannockburn, he urged his troops into battle, not in the name of St. Columba or St. Andrew, but in the name of the Blessed Kessig. As everyone knows, Bannockburn was a magnificent victory for the Scots. And so, in the years following it, more and more people came to Luss on pilgrimage. I suppose their thought was that if Kessig was able to inspire such a victory against the English, then he would certainly be able to ensure that their prayers were passed on to the Almighty. The year after the Battle of Bannockburn, on the 18th of March 1315, Robert the Bruce returned to us, and he awarded this little church a three-mile girth of sanctuary, three miles in which people were free from the rigors of the law, three miles in which people who were living didn't need to pay taxes. A few years later, round about 1318, we think, there were so many people coming here on pilgrimage that a new church was built. And in order to provide a centerpiece to this church, this figure was created. Never meant to be lying down as it is here. If you look at the base, you can see that it really is a base. It was made to stand up. If this had really been, for example, the effigy of a medieval bishop designed to lie over the place of his burial, instead of there being a base like that, there would have been a lamb at his feet. And we can tell the dating of the stone from some of the details of the carving, particularly uh, around the moustache and the hair here. So if you'd been here in 1318, you'd have seen a new church, This would have been the centerpiece, and you'd be able to come and offer your prayers to God through the intermediary of St. Kessig. This has quite an interesting history. Remained in the church, we believe, 
until 1560. 1560 was the time of the Scottish Reformation. Now, I can't tell you exactly where this happened, but I can tell you what happened inside one of the houses in Luss. There was real consternation about the fact that the reformers were coming. What would happen to the treasures that people had in the church? The treasures being this wonderful effigy, this ancient, ancient head going back to the 6th century, again, probably St. Kessig, and our ancient font. Rather than have them damaged by the reformers, people came here during the night. They took them away, and where they took them to was a mile and a half south of here to Bandry. And at Bandry, there was a cairn that had been built in order to mark the place where Keswick had been murdered all those years before. They opened up that cairn, and they placed these treasures in the middle of the cairn. And then they kept the secret. They kept the secret so well that it wasn't until 1748, nearly 200 years later, that everything was rediscovered. And the way it happened was like this. Colonel Caulfield was building a new road up beside Loch Lomond for General Wade. When he came to Bandry, the road had to go through where the cairn was, and so the cairn was dismantled, and these treasures were re-found. You see, just a wee bit damaged in places. And eventually, they made their way back to the church. And that's why this figure is sitting here. It's one of our treasures, and it's something that people enjoy coming and seeing. It's also a rattling good story.